Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of XCOM Enemy Unknown! So, in the last episode, we fought off a terror attack in Mexico, killing many, well, two chrysalids, but our first interaction with the chrysalids came out successful. We also killed some floaters. Went out pretty well, we saved almost all the civilians, which was fantastic, and now North America is quite happy with us. Unfortunately, Europe and Asia are not. India, Australia, Germany, and France are freaking out. They're probably going to abandon at least three of us abandoning... <sighs> My goodness words. Three of them are probably going to abandon us in four days when the council report comes up. Hopefully for us it'll be India, Australia, and Germany because France still has a request we can fill for nanofiber vests which will give us some free engineers. Well, not free, but very cheap engineers. That'd be quite nice if we could get it. But we have to see what the random numbers will determine before that happens. So let's get over to the world here and spin it. We're going to get our request from Asia cancelled there. The Jap Japanese laser pistols are not going to happen. And the Thin Man interrogation is complete. Let's assign some new research on that. What do we get? Capturing one of the invaders' infiltration specialists has proven both illuminating and disturbing. Although at first glance they closely resemble the human form and are trained to communicate in a variety of terrestrial languages, this specimen is far from human. We'd assumed its role as an infiltration unit would preclude us from gaining anything of value during our interrogation. However, as it turns out, the captive was surprisingly pliable once we began the procedure. Aside from his primary role as a reconnaissance and infiltration specialist, the Thin Man also proved to be quite familiar with the alien's navigational systems and celestial cartography. The information gained from this interrogation is of crucial importance to our efforts in reverse engineering the alien navigational computers and related systems. So we get a UFO technology research credit, which should make it easier for us to do those various things, such as researching the UFO power source and probably researching the actual craft itself when we get access to the firestorm. For now, though, we're going to research the skeleton suit, I think. It's already a little bit reduced, 50% from basic armor technology. We can get eight days for that, which is pretty good. That'll make our snipers more effective. So we're going to begin that research, which should be nice. Now we see what the, how bad the damage is. Scan for activity and see who abandons us. Here we go. All right. Scanning. Transmission decoded. Let's go. In Australia, India, and Germany have withdrawn. That's actually perfect. Of the three who could have abandoned us, that's nice. That's good that we didn't lose all four of them. All right. He's going to keep talking to us while we're doing this, telling how this is bad. We don't let people abandon us. I know. I understand that. I'm going to do my best to stop it happening again. We have lost three countries. We'll do our best now to not lose any more. So South America and Egypt. We have some, uh, South Africa and Egypt, okay, Brazil over here for South America. However, interesting. We already have the all-in bonus, though, so that's fine. In your efforts. Bonus scientist and engineer from Africa and South America. That's cool. A little bit of money as well. Most of our money here. It says 318. We only actually get like 818 of that because most of it goes to supporting our facilities and planes. So we'll have to carry on and see what we can do. So that gives us a bit of money. That's good. We come back out here from the situation room. We have 119 credits now. Okie doke. Let's see what we can do here. Soon we'll have our satellite uplink online. We'll be able to send our satellites out there, but for now we'll have to make do without. If we take a look here, though, we should probably build a variety of things. First off, we're going to come into engineering. We're going to build ourselves two nanofiber vests, and we're going to give them to the French. In fact, we might only build one. Let's build one. We'll save the rest of our money for other things. We'll submit one order for that. Good. We are going to come back out here. We're going to go into the barracks and take that one away from whoever's using it. Can we actually just give it to them directly without giving it away from that person? No. We can take it off the person who has it in the barracks right now. I'm sorry. I believe it's Fournier who has it. Your nanofiber vest has been... No, not you. Who has it then? Ah. Claire has it. Your nanofiber vest has been revoked, I'm afraid. I know it gives you extra health, but we need to give it away. So we're going here to the Situation Room pending requests. Give them the nanofiber vests. Get us three engineers. Thank you kindly. Excellent. The French should be happy. Widespread satisfaction with the new body armor. We gave them two. Apparently that's not all they wanted. <laughs> Does that make them happier? No, it doesn't. That's fine, though. That's fine. Ugh. Hopefully... Hopefully things go... <laughs> okay. Mysterious body armor has appeared amongst French troops. Yeah, they've got two of them. There's no way you're going to find them. Maybe they've used those to reverse engineer their own, but that seems kind of fast for them to have it immediately afterwards. We have 105 credits to put into other things now, though, which is pretty good. If we check a look at en engineering here, those engineers should make things a bit cheaper for us. What can we buy and for how much? We could make ourselves another scope for our other sniper, which I think I will do and give to him directly. We could also possibly make some laser rifles. I don't know if I really want them, but they'd be better for now because we're going to start running into some stronger enemies soon. I could make some carapace armor as well, which might not be a bad idea either. Hmm. And they're cheaper too because we have more engineers. I think we'll make one scope. And we'll see how much that costs. One scope gives us with $92. If we make, let's say, three laser rifles, I think we have... Yeah, three su two supports. I don't know. How many do we want of these? The laser rifles are good. They can't be used by snipers or heavy weapons because we don't have the specialties for those. 
don't have a, we don't have a laser shotgun either because we didn't uh, do the precision laser check. I could make two of these. The thing is, making these now could be useful because if somebody else asks for laser rifles, we can give them these when we want to actually have their plasma rifles. The only problem is this uses up our alloys, and I believe making plasma rifles is actually really expensive. We shouldn't need to make any, though, because we have our own, to be fair. So let's just do this. Laser rifles, sure, we'll make two of these just in case we need them. Come on, manufacture, yes. Two laser rifles, that'll do. All right, submit that order. Oh, laser rifles. Fancy. Lining up to test them out. I haven't actually ever seen this animation because I never bothered to make these in the original game. Nice painting of a sectoid. And he got vaporized. Cool. Alright, well that's that. That is one melted sign. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, we have some laser rifles here. We'll be able to equip our people with those. So that is fantastic. If we check out... We could make some carapace armor as well. We could make two of those. I might want to hold on to some money though in case we need some later on. If we check out our barracks, let's make sure we give these people their things. So Vos needs to have... Is Vos injured? There he is, Walker. Alright, Vos, you can have yourself a scope to give yourself better accuracy, because that's always good. There you go. Congratulations, chum. We're going to go and give people some fancy other guns as well. So I guess we'll give them to our supports. Matsumoto can have a laser rifle. Assault rifle. Laser rifle gives you an accuracy bonus, I think. No, which is better accuracy. The light plasma rifle gives you the accuracy bonus. That's what I was thinking of. All right, so we'll give him that laser rifle. Enjoy. Did that change his shoulder pads? It did. Look at that. His shoulder pads change. That's kind of funny. I've never seen that before. It just changes belt, too. It does. His knee pads, his shoulder pads change with the plasma rifle. That's kind of funny. Or the laser rifle. Whatever. You know what I mean. I could give one to, to Yon Yoon. But the thing is, this thing is already pretty good at what it does. Four to six, this one is what, five to seven? This is better though than the shotgun. Uh, has improved crit chance as well, not quite as good a crit chance as the shotgun. Maybe we'll leave him with the shotgun since he is relying on close combat anyway. And we'll give our other, who we can give the laser rifle to though, I made another one. I can't give it to these guys, I could give it to Suleiman, I'll give it to her. She can actually use it. Here you go, Suleiman. You have a laser rifle as well, making you a bit more effective. I'd like to get some carapace armor, though, if we're going to be going up close against more powerful enemies soon. So maybe I'll buy some of that, too. Maybe just one. I'll give it to Yon Yoon. And we'll hold on to the rest of our money for later. That sounds like a pretty solid plan. We'll come in here. We'll build ourselves an extra carapace armor as well. It'll take more of our alloys, which is not great, but better than nothing. Submit the order for another carapace armor. Good. We have one. Let us go equip that on Yon Yoon. Here you go, Yan Yoon. Enjoy yourself some carapace armor. There you go. We've got a little this custom animation here as he tests out his new armor. Mm -hmm. Good. Developed based on ship armor, which is nice. The guns in the background there is kind of funny, but there's no plasma weapons up there yet. Or rather, laser weapons, even though we've stolen some. That's kind of interesting to note. Some grenades and stuff. Okay, that's well, better than nothing. You'll be a little bit harder to kill now. You have your arc thrower as well, since you're probably going to try and capture whatever new aliens we happen to find. What do we do now? That is the question. I guess we try and spin the globe and see what we find. Is that really the best choice, though? Probably. Is there anything else we even can do right now? I don't think so. Well, I guess that's what we do then. Alright, so let's spin it then, I guess. Let's get over here and spin that globe. Give me a UFO, please. That's what we want the most, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Alright, satellite uplink is completed, that is good, that'll let us launch three more satellites in a couple days when they're actually finished, and that will help a lot with our money problem and with dealing with our global panic situation, so that's good. Okay, we're not going to sign them a new construction because we can't, Chippernova's back on active duty, so that's good, let's get more activity, give me a UFO, dang it, we're going to get our skeleton suit here in a second, that's good, let's see what that's all about, sign them a new research. Having reviewed a number of reports from our soldiers deployed on past combat missions, we felt it was necessary to address their concerns regarding the need for a power descent mechanism to scale objects in the field. With that goal in mind, this medium density armor was developed using the alien alloys to reduce weight wherever possible. Despite the reduction in overall plate thickness, the protective qualities of this armor have been ma maintained through the use of a multi-layered composite lining within the suit. The integration of a pneumatic grapple unit provides our troops with the ability to scale objects for a tactical height advantage when needed, and the micro servo motors utilized by this system also augment the reflexes of anyone wearing the suit, improving the odds that the operator will avoid incoming enemy fire while also increasing the available movement range. Very nice. Gives us access to skeleton suits. Our first attempt at combining medium weight body armor with an integrated grappling hook for scaling objects in the field. Fantabulous. And we can do some more research. Do you want precision lasers? Do we want heavy lasers? That'll give us the 
sniper, shotgun, and minigun, or do we just go straight for light plasma rifle? It'll take 23 days, but we'll get it eventually, and when we get that, we can actually use the ones we've already got. This, since we are doing it the sneaky way, uses one light plasma rifle to do it, but that's fine. In my opinion, we'll have three left, and that's more than enough at the moment given that most of our people use sniper rifles and whatnot. Anyway, we're probably going to go for laser snipers and laser miniguns soon, because we're not going to have any way of leveling up to the plasma rifle, sniper rifle, or minigun for a long time, and the light plasma rifles are really effective. We could do the USO power source. It's just going to give us access to the new firestorms and Illyrium generators, though, so it's not the most important, in my opinion. This is so long, though. 23 days takes forever, but you know what? I think we'll do it anyway. It should be pretty good. Let's try I appreciate it. Your efforts to support we need those commander. things a-going. Can we actually left. make any of our skill and suits yet? I don't know if we have enough people or enough money. Oh, uh, we're one engineer short and 30 credit and 5 credits short as well. Not great, but that's fine. We'll be able to hopefully recover from that. Let's jump over here to our globe, continue working here. Five days till the satellites are up. We're probably going to have to fight someone before that. This will be done two days before our council report, which isn't great either. What do we see? Alien abductions reported. Okay, where are our abduction Grand sites? We, we have Canada, which is going to offer assistance. us a lieutenant support, abductions which we don't really need. It's also no hold. panic there, so we can, don't have to worry about that at the moment. Glasgow wants to offer us four engineers, and Shanghai wants to offer us four scientists. I think the obvious choice here is the engineers, because that'll make us a little bit closer to being able to make more satellites later on down the line. Money would have been a good option as well, but we don't have access to that. So Glasgow it is. Having more scientists would also make it a lot faster for our research, though, which would give us our plasma rifles much faster. But I think what we need right now is engineers. So we're going to go for engineers here. Alright, everybody's got their gear pretty well equipped, I believe. I think that's pretty much what we want, although I don't see... Hang on, we'll get rid of one of these guys. We'll get rid of Fournier for this mission. You're clear out of here. We'll bring in Yon Yoon. That's what we want to see. That lovely carapace armor keeping us alive. Arc Thrower is also good in case we come across a new enemy type we can try and capture. This might be a really, really, really hard fight. I don't know. We might start coming across new enemies here. It's a little bit scary. Let's jump in here and see what we see, though, because we won't find out until we get down there. And until we get down there, we have no idea what we're doing. So, let's go look. What map are we on? We'll never know. Let's see what we see. Those red storms are nasty looking, though. I don't like that. Makes me regret losing those countries already. Ugh. Let's begin assault. <sighs> okay, we got some shops here. Looks like the mighty cart. That's fine. That's fine. Let us get down there then, I guess, and see what we can do. Hopefully, we'll be able to take them out. And hopefully, there's nothing really nasty waiting for us down here. We do have some laser weapons on our supports. We do have some better armor on our front line crew, so this should be okay. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Alright, we are here. What have we got? We have our crew here, two laser weapons, our nice armor in the middle. Hmm. Let's see here for a second. Who have we got? If I... Hmm. I want to move up here. Let's take a look at this map first. Is this a thin map or a fat map? It's pretty long that way. How long is it this way? Pretty long that way, too. Okay, it's pretty much a square map. So this building is probably a good place to move through first, although we don't know what's behind here yet, either. Eh, I don't know. We'll have to move through it pretty carefully, I think. So let's take a look at that in a second here. I think we'll move... Who we can move first? Alright, I think what we're going to do is we're going to approach this building first. It looks to me like this is a good place to enter from. I think there's another attached building over here on this map. I'm not entirely sure. This is a big one, though, if it's a big square one. I think it is. I think there's probably four different stores on it. But I think if we approach this first one first, that'll be pretty good. So what we're going to do, I think, is just that. Matsumoto is going to move up to this car over here, and he might be able to see something from there. Yes, he sees some sectoids. It looks like he doesn't actually see them. Okay, that's weird. Let's move somebody else up and see if they can see them. Suleiman, if I move you over to this car, will you be able to see the sectoids? What if I set... Hang on. If I set Matsumoto to Overwatch, I bet you the moment that we get in there with Suleiman, we'll be able to shoot at them in open cover because they should move. Yes, here we go. Our three sectoids have realized we saw them and did not trigger... Oh, one of them did trigger the Overwatch. And please murder them, Matsumoto. First shot with laser gun murders a sectoid. Fantastic. Four damage shot there. That's all we needed. Good enough for me. So Suleiman now has a shot. Can she see anything in there? There's still three targets? Really? That one's gone. <laughs> That's funny. It still says three, even though the Overwatch killed one. Weird. Alright, Suleiman, can you kill that guy? 53% chance to hit him. Take your shot. K 
Can you hit him, please? Two. Yes! Two dead sectoids. Fantastic. That's our first two shots with the laser rifles. Two kills. Fantastic. Vols, you can't see anything, though, for some reason. I guess that wall must be in the way there, blocking you. That's fine, though. I'll move you over to this green thing, and then you might have a shot later. Alright. Still alone, apparently. That's fine, though. You're hunkered down. Nothing to be able to hit you anyway. What else can we do here? We'll take Yon Yoon. I could dash him right over to here. If I run and gun him, he'd probably have a pretty clean shot at that guy, too. I'm not entirely sure we want to do that, though. Can we move with Ryan to an interesting position? She can get over to this car. What do we do with her? She can see him. What's the accuracy on that shot? 29%? That's not so good. Especially because we're only going to get one shot with her. Hollow targeting will make it easier for anyone else to hit her, though. So even if she don't, doesn't hit, it'll make it good for anybody else. Let's take the shot, then. Use that hollow targeting. 29% chance to hit. Doesn't matter if it hits or not. Looks like it did, though. Fantastic. That's a dead enemy. That's the first time I've ever seen the hollow targeting effect, too, which is pretty cool. Surprise that hit, actually. I was really not expecting that. Nicely done, friend. Alright, well, let's... I guess we'll move up on this building next. If we get around behind this stuff, we should be pretty effective here. Problem is, if there's anything really nasty in there, we're probably not equipped to deal with it at the moment. Especially if they're all clumped around one car, because if they have anything explosive they can use, that would be really bad. Alright. Let's work our way over here. I don't think these shops connect to the back, do they? No. We get out of the back door, but I think that's about it. Okay, well, we'll have to make do with what we've got, then. There are aliens moving around somewhere. Let's see if we can clear out this shop next, and then we'll probably work our way back from there. There's probably somebody in here, though, and this could be nasty if we run into anything really bad. We could also try and blow this wall open, but we have to use explosives to get through there. Might not be a bad plan, though, because that way we can use this cover instead of having to go out through this open window, and then we'd have those cars, which are likely to explode if anything hits them. We might try that. We might try and go through this wall. That might be a good idea. All right, let's try this. We're going to go... Vols, you're actually going to move up to a better bit closer position over here. That should be good, because we're going to blow this wall open over there, so he'll have a good line of sight. Matsumoto, you're going to move up to this thing, this fruit stand, whatever that thing is. Jump in through the window, good, excellent. We're going to take Yon Yoon, you're actually going to move over to this side of the fruit stand, that should be good. We'll try and do this next turn, I think, so we'll give everybody a chance to get into position first. Actually, Vos, I'm going to move you right over to this low wall. That should be a better position for you. Not a quite as good cover, but it should be a better line of sight. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to move you... I'm going to dash you, I think, right now. I'm going to dash you over to here. That'll do. That should be a pretty solid spot. There we go. Novikov, I can move you onto the roof, which is a pretty interesting proposition. I don't think I can see much from up there, though. On this map, everything is probably going to be inside. So I'll leave you there. I might actually move you over to this side. That looks like a pretty good spot there. You get some cover. And... That would be a nice spot to snipe in at this angle from, and you can always move if you have to. So that'll do. Take cover there, dude. And Suleiman, you can see something? No, you're still just glitched. That's a, that's that dead sectoid over there. All right, well, let's move you, and that should be fine. I'll move you to this position in the corner, and that should be good. All right, so next turn, we're going to open that wall. Let us overwatch here, just in case somebody decides to try and sneak around us. But I think we should be okay here. Alright, alien activity. They're over that way, apparently. Let's see if we can't bust this wall down. If there's nothing here, that's fine, but I have a feeling there will be, so we'll take it down and see what we see. I'm going to drop a grenade right through here. This might destroy the weapon fragments. I'm not sure if it will, because we are attacking right where that body is. I'm not sure if this will even blow up in the whole area, but if it does, that should be good. Let's test it out. Bam! There goes a huge chunk of wall. Huge chunk of wall, but we still can't see anything. Apparently we can't see in there yet. What if we move somebody up? This looks like it's still cover. So, Layman, you can't move? Why not? Oh, you just have the glitch, don't you? Oh, wow. Wow. Look at all those floaters. Look at all those floaters. Well, you can see them, so you might as well take a shot. That guy's exposed over there. Take him. 73% chance to hit, 60% chance to crit. These guys are all exposed. That's amazing. Well, we can murder some people here if we get a shot before the game realizes we can see them. Who has the best shot? Matsumoto, you have 76 on these guys. That's pretty darn good. What's with the music? Must be near a uh, radio or something. All right, Matsumoto, see if you can't take out one of those floaters before they have a chance to do a darn thing. And blam! Dead floater, that's what we like to see. And now they realize we can see them. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. They're going to fly around a little bit. We should probably still be able to see them when they move. Unless they get actually into cover, which would be unfortunate. All right, Novikov, can you see anything from here? Ah, they are all in cover, but you have a... <laughs> that music's back again, that's so weird. You have a 74% chance on each of these guys. 
Who do you want to shoot? You can take that guy. Actually, first we'll see what Vos can see, because if he can't see as much, we want to make sure he gets camera. <laughs> Come on, make sure he gets his shot. All right, Vos, that's awesome. That worked out really well. Perfect, in fact. 54, 74, 74, 74. You can see everybody just the same. Take your shot. You're actually going to take a headshot here. Opportunity to make sure they die. Go for that guy, I guess. Can you hit him, Vos? Please do. The answer is no. You almost killed him, but not enough to actually take him down. That's actually not necessarily bad, though. I might be able to go in and steal him with the stunner. We'll have to see, though. We're going to try a headshot here from Novikov. You're going to try and take out that one, I guess. He's got pretty decent health. You're going to go for a headshot as well, giving you the same amount of crit. That's... No, okay, it was a headshot before, I guess. Headshot, yes, 74% chance to hit, 55% chance to crit. That looks like a dead enemy to me. And, bang, goes the gun. That is one dead floater. Awesome. Now, that is Suleiman. She can see in pretty well as well. Can... No, what is the weird grids going on here? Yoon cannot get in close enough to capture one of them this turn, so we're probably just going to murder them all for safety's sake. Suleiman can get a 53 on that guy. And that's all she... No, nope, that guy's... <laughs> that's the dead sectoid still. That's annoying. She got a 53% chance on him. She can also move up, though. If I move her up to here, does that still cover? No, that's gone. I can move her up to here. She'll have slightly better cover. There we go. She might have a slightly better shot now. Is that... No, still 53. Okay, that's fine. Take your 53% chance to hit shot. See if you can take out another floater. Yes, you do. These laser guns are working beautifully for us. Absolutely beautifully. It's another dead floater. Awesome. Yon Yoon can move. I think he's the only one left with an action. He can try and take out this guy. 46% chance on him, Thir 18 on him, that's not great. What is the odds here? They're in low cover. I guess we just have really good accuracy now. That's strange. All right, if I were to dash up to him, if I were to run and gun over to here and try and... I can't, I can't stun him, though. That's unfortunate. I can guarantee he dies, though. So let's do that. We're going to run and gun, make sure we get nice and close. As long as there's no other hidden aliens over here, we should be fine. I'm going to dash right over next to him, still behind cover, so this guy can't immediately get me. And we're going to gun this guy in the back of the head. So, 100% chance to hit, 70 to crit. This is a dead floater. Kablam! Fantastic. <sighs> that was weird. I guess the game wasn't expecting us to blow through the wall like that. Did not know how to react to us. This guy shouldn't be able to launch because he's in a building, so he's probably going to fly over and shoot somebody in the side. Yeah, getting a nice shot of a sideways on Suleiman here. No, he's moving twice. That's really weird. Unfortunately, he moved so far, I can't get over there and stun him this turn. Dang nabbit. Also, that's interesting. It's all on fire, so we can't actually walk and stop in there. You have to run through it. Or can you? He can't even get back that way, can he? Huh. Can they not get through there? That's interesting. I wonder if Run and Gun let him dash through the fire. Or if it only started this turn. That's actually kind of bad. He's stuck over there now. Because he can come back around this way, but he can't actually get into there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I can kill this guy, no problem. He's really exposed here, so he'll go down pretty easy, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. Either way, Suleiman, I might as well have you kill this guy. 87% chance to hit. Actually, who do we want to kill him? Suleiman can do it. She'll get a level up, which will be good. She'll be better off. Ryan should also get probably in there, because she doesn't have a whole lot of skills yet. Ryan, take a shot there. 60% chance to hit. It's not great. You don't have a flank on him, do you? No. If I move you over to here, do you have a flank on him? Probably still not. Whatever. Suleiman, take the shot. You can easily take him out. 87% chance to hit, 60 to crit, more laser rifle wonders, you missed! Wow, that's unusual, I was not expecting that. Yoon can get over here and just gun him across that gap, and that should be pretty effective, but I kind of want to give somebody else the experience. I could give it to Novikov, I could give it to Matsumoto. Matsumoto's pretty powerful already, though. Let's just move Ryan right up next to him and gun him down that way. Alright, now we have a flank on him. 100% chance to hit, 50 to crit, take that sucker down. And that is another dead floater, fantastic. Hollow targeting affected again, didn't matter. Awesome. Alright, so we could go at the back door over here. There's two options on this side, or we can go at the back door over here. I think we'll actually move our people around to this side, so we can come and use these doors, because I have a feeling this is a better position. We can use this side and this side, have two different entrances, and that'll be pretty effective. That's a lot of dead floaters, though, wow. Alright, so we're going to sprint everybody over this way. We should be pretty safe in doing this for now, because I don't think anything on this side of the map can really do much to us at this point. I'm pretty sure they're on the other side. We're going to move around this way and find out, though. So, Matsumoto, you're going to dash all the way over here for us. Not, not, was that upstairs he's trying to bring me? Oh, you can get on top of here! That's kind of cool. 
Oh, you get down to there. You go all the way up and then drop down the layer. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Let's go in the front door then. We should be pretty much safe in here. I've killed a ton of stuff in there already. I don't think there's anything else hiding in that area. And we should be safe to run past here as well. Bash the door in. Good. We're going to spend this turn with some very, very unsafe positioning just so that we can get our people around where we want them. You've shot, so you can't move. You've shot, so you can't move. But Vos can move. So Vos is also going to dash around as far as he can. He'll dash over to there for now. All right, I might move him up on the roof so we can shoot anybody else, but I have a feeling that being up on the roof is not going to be the best position for us, so I'm not going to worry about it for now. We're going to take an overwatch position here just in case something decides to rush in at us. Overwatch there, Plox. Awesome. There we go. Let's see if anybody else tries to move in on us or if those fires go out this turn. That would be nice. Sounds like there's some more floaters. It looks like we can run through here now. The fires have died down, so I guess going all the way around was probably not the best idea. I could have just waited a turn, but either way, that's fine. We will send Vos into... where do we want him? Into... I don't know. <laughs> into here. We're probably going to take two turns getting into position here, because we're going to try and go through these both, both of these sets of doors simultaneously, I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure exactly what we want to do, though, so let's send Ryan over to this one. That'll do. This room is probably safe. I have a feeling there's nothing in here, but we're going to be careful when we open it anyway, because you never know, and there's no point in getting yourself killed for no good reason. We'll send Suleiman across here through the fire as well. She still sees that undead sectoid. Hopefully that doesn't cause a problem with the mission actually ever ending. Novikov can go up on the roof. Maybe I'll send him up on the roof. <laughs> he doesn't make sense, though, if I have Vos instead. Whatever. We'll send him into the building. Is Vos in here yet? Yeah, that's Vos there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll send Novikov into here. That should be fine. I like how he's actually going back around through the side he was already in on. So, Layman, I'm going to have you overwatch just in case. Yon Yoon, I think I'm going to move you over to this door. That should be good. And I'll bring you somebody to support you soon. That should be good there. And Matsumoto is actually going to come join you at this side. Because that way, if we can open these two sides together, we should have a pretty good job of forcing anybody into a pincer kind of situation. Also, something exploded. Don't know what it is, but something exploded. The aliens are over here, apparently, so maybe we'll be able to get them better on this side, but we'll find out when we open the doors, I guess. So, start of a new turn. Let's open this first door. Is there anything inside here? I'd be surprised if there is. No, there is not. Ryan, you're going to move up. Excellent. We're going to move up as well with Suleiman. We're going to move Vos over here as well. I'm putting up most of my defenses at this door because of... No, not you again! That was stupid. I tried to click on Vos and it didn't actually click. Alright. Vos, you're going to move up to this door. You can take Suleiman's place because she obviously did not want to be there. And that's fine. We'll take Novikov and we'll move him over by this wall over here. I'd love to open this door and just open fire on them, but I'm a feeling we want to do that all together. So we'll wait a turn here, send some people on Overwatch just to burn a little bit of time, and then next turn we'll be able to get through that door and see what we see outside. Alright, Ryan, you Overwatch as well. It's a ton of Overwatches, but it doesn't really matter. I should probably have reloaded her, actually, but that's fine. These guys might be flanking us, which is the real worry. Let us open this door and see what happens. Open. Is there anybody out there? Not that we see. That's unfortunate. What about this side? Can you see anything out here? Matsumoto, open the door. Nothing. That's not what we wanted to find out. Alright, I'm going to dash Matsumoto over here. Probably going to swing around the back now, since we do have this side open already. There's nothing here. No. No, that's not good. Alright, we're going to dash Yon Yoon over to this pipe. That should be a more or less safe spot, because I don't think there's anything over there yet. There might be guys in this building, so we might be able to get them that way. We'll send Walker out to this machine, so he should be able to see anything we see out there. And he found the enemy! Where is it? They're over there. He can't shoot them this turn, but we can see them, which is good. So, let's see if we can't take advantage of this. Can anybody get out there and actually take a shot? I don't want to leave anybody out there, because it's a bad position. Ryan, you can't see anything, and you can't get into cover from here either. Jeez, guys, you're the worst at getting into cover. Okay, Ryan's going to move across to here. That should be pretty solid. Novikov's going to move over to the door, and that should be good as well. Excellent. We'll overwatch him just in case they decide to move closer. Suleiman can still only see the ghost of the enemy she saw earlier. That's not good. I have nowhere good to put her. I could dash her all the way down there, but that's not a good idea, I don't think. So I'm going to dash her onto this wall on this side, and that should be a little bit safer for us. Get over there. Awesome. Vos, you can't overwatch, so I'm going to have you hunker down so nobody has a good chance of actually hitting you. Matsumoto is still over here. I could try and move him as well, but the other thing I've seen I think are pretty low. We're going to overwatch from here, and that should be good. Oh, come on. Apparently I can't click overwatch. There we go. That was weird. Okay. These guys are probably going to move this turn. Oh, it's two thin men. Okay. 
two thin men. Yep, they're glitching around. Just don't tell me they're going to teleport. Good, they didn't. Vols can actually shoot one of them. <laughs> that should remind them that we're here. Alright, so what we're going to do first then is we'll get somebody to overwatch. Can we get Novikov around this corner and overwatch with him? If he gets seen, it won't be so good. But if he can stand here and overwatch, that could be really funny. Alright, you're going to stand there. You're going to overwatch. Vos is going to take a shot. That should awaken them. Then we should have a chance to try and get over and block them out. So, can you headshot one of those guys? 94% chance to hit. 55% chance to crit. He's going down. Headshot that thin man. Please don't miss. Oh, you didn't kill him? Really? Really? Alright, well those two thin men are going to react now. They should probably run towards us. Novikov gets a shot on the injured one. Can you kill him? Where's this shot even coming from? Who's aiming right now? Over there. Off screen. Awesome camera work there, game. Alright, he took a shot. He missed, though, which is not good. It leaves him out in the open with two thin men to be shooting at him soon. He's run all the way over there from the outline we saw. Around here. Alright, with the dash over there now, otherwise we'll be in trouble. Okay. I don't think there's probably any other enemies here. We fought a whole ton of people here already. So we're just going to book it over there and try and get around to them before they can do anything to us. The problem is, though, we're going to be very exposed during this approach. We might come into the building. I don't know if we can get around to this. Yeah, it looks like we can get around to there. So we'll come into the building. Open this door. Ryan, you're going to come around to here. You're going to open the secondary door on the inside. Open that one. And you're going to overwatch from there, just in case anyone decides to come through there. So Layman is going to come around to this side, and she's going to overwatch as well. She only has one shot left in her rifle. That's good enough for one overwatch shot. And Yon Yoon, you are, might even dash right into this building. There's no windows on this wall, though, are there? No, those are all TVs. That's not great. Okay, so that's not going to work out so well for us. But we can get in here anyway, so I can dash you through if I really think there's nothing in there. But I don't know that for sure. It's a stressful situation here. There's a lot of things that go wrong. I'm going to move Yon Yoon over to this building over here. He probably won't have line of sight on anything, and that's why I'm not going to bother running and gunning him. That's fine, though. Here are the aliens. They're coming out now for us. Please don't hit my guy. Please don't hit Novikov. I was trying to do something fun. Don't kill him for it. Please don't kill him. Oh, goodness, Novikov. Please don't die. Ow, six damage. This is going to kill you, isn't it? The second guy is going to murder you. Oh, he didn't! Oh, we're so lucky. So lucky. That was such a bad tactical decision. After being so careful earlier on, I really shouldn't have done that. I was expecting they would run... To, I should have known they would run over there. That was really stupid of me, in fact. Either way, it happened, so we're not going to deal with it again now. We're going to run over here. We're going to capture this guy, and we should be able to murder him pretty easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that happens. Bonus Ta Matsumoto is going to run over here and going to gun this guy down in the face. Get him dead, please. And then we're going to try and capture this thin man. So, you are going to gun down the one with full health. He is going to die here. 100% chance to hit. 60 to crit. Kill him, please. Blam! That is one dead thin man. Thank you very much. And we're going to capture his friend to steal his plasma rifle. Alright. We will take you on Yoon. That's what you get for giving us trouble. We're going to come in here and just kill you. So you're going to move right over there. This should not be a dash. We should be able to stun. 95% chance or something like that. Yeah, 90% chance to stun. Please work! Light him up. And stun successful. Fantastic. That should be the final alien in this map. Another one Good. Down. Done. Ten aliens down. No operatives lost. We captured another plasma rifle. Fantastic. We will continue from here. Ugh, what a mess that was. <laughs> definitely, definitely was really scared there. China's freaking out. We can use our satellites on them soon, so that's fine. Oh, what a mess. Well, could have been worse. Could have been much worse, in fact. We are pretty well off here. Once we get those satellites up, that'll be good. Okay. What happens now when we land? Novikov got promoted to captain. Awesome. Novikov, you get a new ability. Executioner makes you really easy to kill low health targets. You get better accuracy on them. Or opportunist means you can reaction shot and cause critical hits on your reaction shots. I don't know. I've never actually tried taking Executioner. I always took Opportunist, because it seemed like a fun ability to me, being able to uh, overwatch without a reaction penalty. So that seems like the one we're going to take. And getting those reaction shot critical hits on exposed enemies, pretty darn powerful. So Opportunist is what we're going to take for him, at least. We might swap it up for our other crew member, but that seems pretty good. Matsumoto's got another promotion as well. He can take Revive, allowing you to revive critically wounded people, so they're not actually down. Or I can give him Suppressive Fire. I don't actually know what's better for us here. I don't know what's better for us, because the thing is, if people are critically wounded, it doesn't really matter too much if we can get them back into the fight, because if they get killed again, we're in even worse shape. I think we'll go with rifle suppression for him, because having that ability to suppress is pretty powerful, so we'll try that on Matsumoto. We might swap it up for our Suleiman 
roll, but we're not sure. So Lewin just got Gypsy as her nickname. That's a little bit of a derogatory one, but whatever, we'll take it. So promoted to Sergeant, she's going to take Field Medic as well, because having those extra heals is amazing if we need them. Whew, that could have gone quite badly. Novikov took a lot of damage there, but he survived, that's the important thing. Alright, Operation Black Mist was a, su was a success. Got another light plasma rifle, a bunch of dead people, got another Thin Man captive, not that that matters, and 18 weapon fragments. Fabulous. Alright, the XCOM squad has given us four engineers as a reward. United Kingdom has been decreased in panic by two, and North America and Asia are now freaking out a little bit more. Touch, Commander. Hey, let's see our situation room now. Yeah, three and three. Look at all that red! We don't even have enough uh, satellites to calm all these guys down. Madness. Alright, well we have a bunch, that's better than nothing. We're not quite ready to use them yet. It'll be three more days until they're ready. I think what we might do is run the timer until we get to there. We're almost done for this episode, I suspect. Let me check the time quickly. Yeah, we're approaching that 30 minute timer, so let's see if we can't finish our satellites here, and then we'll see what we're going to do after that. So, run the time a little bit further forward, and we found a UFO. Well, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Alright then. I think we're going to have to actually end this episode here then, because we're going to have to do the episode next time with the UFO, and we'll deal with the satellites and whatnot then. Okay. As it stands, thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing some XCOM, Enemy Unknown for you here. We had a pretty interesting battle there, got very lucky at the end. Things could have gone much worse for us there. Whew, and we should have our satellites up soon to help with our global panic problem. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on the episode. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.